Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station. I'm Wesley from Google, joined by Martin, Port of the Train, and our special guest, Aaron, who will be joining us later in the video to help you modernize your apps running on one of our serverless compute platforms. Happy to be back, Wes. Now, which App Engine legacy bundle service are we migrating off of today? We've done Data Store, Memcache, and Blob Store so far. You know, I'm tired of showing people how to migrate off them bundled services. Let's do the opposite and show users how to keep using them instead. Did you just say we're staying on App Engine legacy services today? What kind of migration is this? Yeah, in a little bit of a plot twist, our little friend Porter will be taking you on a journey as usual, but this time, rather than migrating away from App Engine bundled services, we're going to show you how to stay on those legacy APIs while upgrading to the latest App Engine runtimes so you're still modernizing your apps. OK, I know what we're doing, but I don't know why. Can you explain to everyone out there? I thought the main reason for this series was to get people off of App Engine dependencies, uh, like bundle services, and migrate to equivalent cloud standalone services or to other serverless platforms. You're right, Martin. But many users have indicated it's more urgent for them to upgrade language versions because older ones aren't supported anymore. Also, migrating to a standalone service may require more effort. Requiring a move to standalone services before updating language releases means two huge challenges back to back. Now developers can update language versions first and then migrate to standalone services on their own timelines. But what if I just want to update to a newer language release without migrating to standalone services? Is that possible, Wes? Yes, it is, maybe. I know why you want to just update language releases, but the catch is that not all bundled services are accessible from the latest runtimes. If your code doesn't use any of the services listed in the Not Available column, then yes, you can just update language versions without migrating to standalone services. What if my App Engine app does use one of those Not Available services? Uh, what do I do then? For bundled services not available in second gen runtimes, you have to migrate to a standalone cloud or a third party service. Take a look at this chart on this page. I'll drop a link down below to see our migration recommendations. Sounds good, Wes. So the first generation App Engine runtimes are Python 2, Java 8, PHP 5, and Go 111 and older. Does upgrading to newer versions affect these languages in the same way? That's a really good question because the answer is no. Each language runtime enables access to the bundled services in a different way. For Python, you need to switch web frameworks, add some wrapper code, and integrate with the App Engine SDK. For Java, you would add the App Engine bundled services jar and enable it in configuration. And for Go and PHP, use the latest App Engine SDK. OK, so what are those changes needed for Python? While Python code changes are needed, the most extensive change is switching from Web App 2 to another framework. We already did this in Module 1, so let's start there. It's already been migrated to Flask, so let's walk through the steps needed from there to migrate it to Python 3, but preserving data store access with the NDB bundled service. Join me on the computer now to walk through those steps. It's always good to start from a working app, in this case, the Module 1 sample. Whether using your app from doing the code lab or getting it from the repo, delete the lib folder if you have one, and run the pip install command to reinstall the third-party libraries there. Python 2 developers know this is how you bundle third-party libraries with your app. One benefit from upgrading to Python 3 is that you no longer have to self-bundle. Now run gcloud app deploy to redeploy the module 1 app to the cloud. Point your browser to it and verify it shows the most recent visits. Now that we've confirmed it works, let's migrate it to Python 3, but continue to use bundled services like App Engine NDB to talk to Data Store. It's much easier to use third-party libraries with the App Engine Python 3 runtime. You just list them in requirements.txt. In this app, we need the App Engine SDK, so add App Engine Python Standard to requirements.txt and save. Next is app.yaml. At the top, replace the runtime directive with a supported Python 3 release. Today, that would be 3.9 or 3.10. Delete both the thread safe and API version directives as neither are used in Python 3. This app only has script handlers, so we can delete the entire handler section. But if your app has static file handlers, leave them intact and just remove the script handlers. The Python 3 runtime doesn't support built-in third-party libraries, so if you had a library section in your app.yaml, delete it. In Python 3, all third-party libraries go into requirements.txt, and that's it. A minute ago, we added the App Engine SDK into requirements.txt, 
and to use the SDK, add a new App Engine API's directive set to true in app.yaml, so it now has just these two lines you see here. The SDK repo is linked down in the video description below in case you're interested. What else? We just mentioned there's no more support for built-in third-party libraries. There's also no more vendoring or copying of non-built-in third-party libraries, so delete the lib folder if you have one. Because all the third-party stuff is now in requirements.txt, you don't need appenginconfig.py either, so delete that too. If you do need something special, say a private dependency and you've got an artifact registry Python repository, you can use the special extra index URL option in requirements.txt to bring in those dependencies. There are a couple of links down below to learn more about private dependencies. Okay, that's it for config. Let's take a look at main.py. At the top, import the WSGI wrapper from the App Engine SDK, then use it by wrapping the Flask app's WSGI object. Once it's wrapped, you can use any available bundled service like normal. If you haven't migrated from Web App 2 yet, there's a link down below to the docs page where you can see the Module 0 Python 2 Web App 2 app lined up next to this Module 1B Python 3 Flask app. Upgrading to Python 3 is this straightforward for the bundled services that are available, unless you're using Blob Store, Deferred, or Mail APIs. We'll talk more about them in a minute, but link below are the respective guides for you to see how to use them in Python 3. For this sample app, we're done and only need to deploy. Because all third-party libraries are in requirements.txt and you've deleted the lib folder and appenginconfig.py, there's no pip install command, so go straight to gcloud app deploy to upload it to the cloud. Hit the app from a browser or curl to it, and when you see the most recent visits page, realize you now have a working Python 3 version of the sample app using the NDB bundled service. Congrats! Okay, wrapping up. App Engine First Gen had all of these bundled services. They were removed when Second Gen launched in 2018 because we wanted user apps to be more portable. We heard from customers who really wanted them back, so we brought back as many as we could in 2021. There are more bundled service Python 3 sample apps in the migration repo. For those with an A and B folders like modules 2 and 13, that means it uses a standalone cloud service which can be used by both Python 2 and 3. But folders with just a B without an A equivalent like modules 7 and 12, that means they use a bundled service. Now you know how to use bundled services in Python 3. Let's get back to the main program. Thanks for the overview of the Python code changes. Ah, uh, that wasn't too bad. Yep, and to repeat from earlier, if your app does use a bundled service that isn't available in the next generation runtimes, migrate to a standalone or third-party alternative. Some services like Blob Store, Mail, and Deferred APIs need a bit more code tweaking, but we'll cover that in another module. Otherwise, the rest of the legacy APIs should work just like they have. Also note that all new features are going into all the standalone services. Making these APIs available to our early adopters is specifically to help with migration efforts. That's great. And I'm also glad our Java, Go, and PHP friends don't have to make any code changes. Me too. And I've invited our friend Aaron to briefly cover what's needed in Java to access the bundled services. Aaron? Thanks, Wes. As a Java 8 developer, you're familiar with App Engine and WebXML serving as your main configuration file. You'll continue to use that file when using the bundled services in Java 11 or 17 runtimes, but you'll have to make two changes. You'll need to add the App Engine API's jar as a dependency, and add a line of config that enables the use of legacy bundled services. And that's really it. When you eventually migrate away from the bundled services in your Java 11 or 17 app, you can use app.yaml for config instead. We've also got links below to the documentation on accessing the bundled services on all the next-gen runtimes. Cool. Thanks, Aaron, for joining Wes and me today to help our Java developers. Now, Wes, the team removed access to all these bundled services when the second generation of App Engine launched. Why did they do that? Well, the main reason was that many folks felt that writing against proprietary APIs was too restricted for them. Users wanted their apps to be more portable, plus many of App Engine's bundled services had matured to become their own standalone products anyway. So the decision was made to launch the second generation runtimes without these bundled services so that apps would be more portable. Ah. That makes sense, especially since Google wants to have the most open cloud out there. Uh, so why are we then adding access to these bundle services back into App Engine? Another good question. Well, guess what? We listened to user feedback, and many of them told us that some of those features are what brought them to App Engine to begin with. So that's why the team tried to bring back as many as were feasible. Cool. Thanks for explaining. It's great that developers can now update to a more modern language release, 
without having first to migrate off of the bundle services. That's right, Martin. Users can now upgrade language versions and then migrate to the standalone services when they're ready, giving them much more flexibility in modernizing their apps. Ah, uh, you mean they can then take advantage of those serverless migration station videos we've already done? Yep, like moving from App Engine Data Store to Cloud Data Store, see modules two and three, push tasks to cloud tasks, see modules seven, eight, and nine, memcache to cloud memory store, see modules 12 and 13, blob store to cloud storage in modules 15 and 16, and so on. If you're considering containerizing your App Engine apps for Cloud Run, see modules four and five for doing so with and without Docker. And for migrating small App Engine apps to Cloud Functions, see module 11. Good. I'm glad we can make the bundle services available to help with migration efforts. Last question. What about Ruby and Node.js? Are they also App Engine runtimes? Ah, yes, that's right. Since they're the newest languages supported, we can't open a wormhole to the past because they never had first generation runtimes with bundle services. The good news is they don't have any migration to perform because they're already using the latest and greatest. Our early adopters need more help, and that's what we're here for. And we look forward to having you join us for those migrations. This is Wes on behalf of Martin, Aaron, and Porter. We hope to see you at another migration station or on another serverless expedition soon. Happy travels. Mm -hmm.